Hello everyone, I'm excited to announce that I finally reached the conclusion of a five-year quest. This quest being, of course, the search for the perfect arcade stick lever. This is something I've spent hundreds of hours and hundreds of dollars buying and importing pretty much every single lever I've heard of or can get my hands on to go through and test out and to see what qualities I think stand out, what qualities I think work, which qualities I think don't work. I've also modified tinkered and destroyed a few arcade stick levers along the way to finally come to this conclusion. So in this video I of course am going to reveal my build for what I consider the perfect arcade stick. But before I get to that I also want to go over my underlying philosophy of what makes an arcade stick quality in the first place. What qualities I'm trying to hone in on and really optimize. Because otherwise it goes back to what you see in a lot of arcade stick reviews and a lot of videos on these types of things where people will go over oh this has this type of preference this has that type of preference but in this video I'm not trying to give you preferences I'm trying to give you my philosophy on performance and what I think what I think is objectively better performance than other things so if you don't agree with me of course you don't agree with me but at least I'm giving you my ideals and what qualities I'm trying to select for that way when you're judging levers against each other, you can at least know how I come to the conclusions that I come to. Because again, a lot of times people judge levers and you don't really even know what their final thoughts are or what the best qualities are. So that's what I want to go over in this video. So the first thing I want to talk about, the first quality I search for is the ideal throw. So what is the throw of the arcade stick? See here in this little display. This isn't actually the perfect arcade stick, by the way. This is my analog arcade stick. But the display can at least show you, you know, a visual representation of what I'm talking about. So you'll see here the red dot is the activation and the black dot is the actual stick hitting the gate, right? So the idea for the perfect throw for me is you want the activation and hitting the gate to be nearly simultaneous. You want to activate a little bit before you hit the gate like this, like now we're activated, now we're hitting the gate. You want, there's a certain distance you want to have there where if you have too early of an activation, then you have dead space, dead throw, I call it, which is useless. And if you have too late of an activation, you don't get your diagonals. Not You have dead diagonals. You don't want that. So it's this perfect, perfect space that you have. And I think there is, you know, almost a mathematical way of analyzing this. And so the arcade stick I have, of course, does this, where you're hitting the activation just before you hit the gate. Now, I have seen people talk about oh this is a thing of preference where like some players will have a lot of dead zone over here right they'll have the activation but they don't hit the gate for a long time and I've even heard people say oh you shouldn't ever hit the gates of your stick you should all be playing with it you know within the activation area don't ever hit the gates to me this is complete nonsense because the purpose of the gate is to stop your arcade stick from moving and by having it line up to be ideally hitting the gate when you want the activation this adds to your consistency a lot when you're doing like big movements, big hand movements. That gate adds to a lot of reliability where otherwise you're wasting a lot of your coordination and control trying to stop your, yourself from overthrowing. Why even overthrow in the first place? My philosophy is the gate should always stop you before you overthrow. So that is the first quality that I'm searching for that this stick has. I consider perfect throw distance. Also on the subject of throw distance, I believe strongly in having as short a throw as possible while still having distinctive inputs. So basically, a lot of arcade sticks, most arcade sticks I say, have too long of a throw. In fact, most are Korean sticks. I play on Korean stick. This stick is a Korean stick, by the way. They have much too long of throws, and that in introduces what I like to call throw lag, where if you start playing on long throw arcade sticks you're just used to having this throw lag in there but once you start playing on short arcade sticks and this is my thinking why Saimitsu's are particularly good for shmups is because they have really short throws is because you're reducing that lag between okay we need to change direction we need to change direction we need to get the activation as quick as possible while still having distinctive inputs so that's my ideal is with the throw you want it to be perfectly spaced from the gate and you also want it to be as short as possible while still having distinctive inputs. I've taken this to the extreme one time where I had a throw so short 
that if you like touch the arcade stick at all like this it would activate but then <clears throat> what happens is your inputs start to muddle together and you don't have consistent hand movements it's all about if you watch my um, guide on hand movements it's all about basically matching the arcade stick with those hand movements so that when you do the hand movement the arcade stick is following along activating and stopping you guiding you without having to do extra work it adds a lot more consistency so that's the first thing I'm looking for is the perfect throw. The second thing that I'm looking for is the perfect tension. So this one is probably going to be the more controversial of the two because a lot of people really like heavy tension. I'm not exactly sure why, but heavy tension is hot right now. Most people are trying to configure their sticks to be really, really heavily tensioned. I think this is mostly because of uh, Tekken where I think there's a belief that the Korean players play on really heavy tension. Having watched a lot of hand cam movements of the Korean players, I actually don't think that's true. I think a lot of Korean players play on the tension that I'm recommending. My belief on tension is you want as light of tension as possible while still having distinctive movements and still letting your stick return to neutral in a quick fashion. This is where this particular build really shines because before having the, the plates and stuff that I'll talk about later, I actually could not find this and so I was always playing with a little bit of a heavier tension than I wanted but basically you want the tension to be light but still when it returns to neutral your stick is stable what happens is if you get for instance that I got a Saimitsu LS32 with a really light spring if you get really light spring arcade sticks you'll know what this is like or really light uh, grommets on Korean sticks is your stick kind of wobbles you know or you have to kind of puppy guard your stick to return to neutral. You don't want that. What you want is very little resistance, but just enough to help you feel where those micro switches are. So here's your micro switch. You want enough tension to feel it, but you also want to let go and it just slams right to the middle. So that's the thing. That's especially important for shmups where I feel like if you over tension your stick, what you're doing is you're adding imprecision because like, the idea is you want to brush those micro switches perfectly if you want to micro dodge or even with um, fighting games, right? If you want to do kind of a quarter circle motion input, you want to brush that diagonal really cleanly. But if you have really heavy tension, sometimes it'll pop before it hits the corner correctly or especially with precision and, and shmups and stuff. I think over tensioning your arcade stick is just um, it's not a good idea, especially since sometimes your snaps to neutral can be so powerful that you don't actually, you can uh, overthrow it a little bit. So you don't want to do that either. So that's the second thing is finding that perfect tension. I definitely go for the lighter side of tension. That way it feels kind of like you're brushing your stick. You can do those hand movements comfortably, especially if you're playing something like Tekken where you're Korean backdashing for like three hours. Having he heavy, ten your hand strength is only so limited, right? Um, arm strength will only take you so far so again kind of a lighter tension but sturdy enough that when it returns to the center it's perfectly stable and it feels reliable the third thing that I'm looking for is proper cornering corners are a big one especially if you play on Korean stick um, I play on Korean stick this is a Korean stick but even if you don't play on Korean stick I'm hoping these principles will carry over if you play on a Semitsu or something like that or maybe I do feel personally that Korean stick is superior to Japanese. That's super controversial. But I think the grommet tension system is just better than springs because they have more feel and they allow you to do things that I don't think are quite as intuitive on spring. Um, but anyway, so with cornering, especially on Korean stick, because they're a big deal, the idea for the idea for cornering is you need to have the perfect ratio. This is what I've spent a lot of time agonizing over to where you want it to be again that short throw you want the corner to be perfectly ratioed to where if you're doing like say like a quarter circle you're brushing that diagonal consistently every time you get that diagonal but if you make your corners too big maybe by having too big of an actuator what ha ends up happening is you start muddling your inputs to where you get diagonals in this area or in this area you don't want that because if you're transitioning, let's say for fighting game people, right? You're doing a crouch block in the corner, but you need to stand for an overhead. If you have too big of a corner, what's going to happen is you're getting up to that stand is going to take too long. You're, you're adding a sort of corner lag, right? 
directional input lag. Um, also, too, you can simply over... Um, you can activate corners when you don't want them, right? You're trying to back up and you end up crouch blocking and you're not wanting to do that. So there's a lot of places to, especially with shmups, where a lot of shmups you need to kind of uh, switch between diagonals and backs a lot if you're kind of creeping away from bullet patterns and stuff like that, like this. Having too big of corners is a problem. So finding that perfect corner ratio is what you're looking for. So these are the three criteria that I have been searching for and that I think I finally found with the arcade stick that I put together. So let me now transition to the build itself. So here we go. So what you're looking at here is the infamous, the famous, the golden lever. Um, again, I am a Korean stick player. I do think that Crown has a lot of really good sticks, especially the um, Crazy Dong Pal. The Crazy Dong Pal is my second favorite arcade stick, and I think if you're interested in trying out a Korean stick, I wouldn't say jump to this build immediately because it's a lot of money, um, relatively speaking. But that crazy dong pal right out of the box is really solid. That's my kind of recommendation for people who want to try out Korean stick that are Japanese stick players. And then from there, if you end up falling in love with Korean stick, then I'd say, okay, now let's graduate up to the Fanta style stick that I'm having here. However, what you're looking at is the golden stick, but this is not the build that I'm recommending because what I have done is I've taken, taken different parts from the golden stick and combined them into my specific build because I think the stock one that you just buy is not what you're looking for. I think it you know throws too long and all that sort of stuff I've went over. So I'm going to give you the parts that you want to put together to put together this ultimate arcade stick in my opinion, right? So the first thing you need to buy is you actually need to buy a Fanta Taeyang. Um, so you can buy the case from the Golden Stick people, but it's super overpriced and currently out of stock. So why do that when you can just buy a Fanta Taeyang itself for cheaper? So I got this from Focus Attack. I've actually had my... Actually, the one I have is from Itoki in Korea. They have better Fantas. But it doesn't matter for the sake of this build because all you need is the case. Every other part you're going to replace. All you need is the main base case and the micro switches. So get yourself a Fanta Tang. If you want to get yourself custom micro switches that are different, that's fine. I think the, the stock ones work perfectly fine. So the next, oh, the next point I want to go over is you need to get full collar. Again, this is going to be another controversial pick. I know right now the hotness is to get the chopped collars, the shorter collars, whatever they call them. I personally feel that the chopped collars are not as good. The gates aren't perfectly, they're not perfectly height, right? Um, they have a different feel and they tend to activate, they, have, they tend to have longer throws because the gates lower and you can compensate for that, but it doesn't have as much reliability and feel in my opinion as having the full collar. So that's my recommendation is you need to go full collar no top collars. In order to do that, um, I have to admit, a lot of people do not have Korean sized holes in their arcade stick. So with your arcade stick, you need to have this big old hole to put your full collar through, right? Uh, Japanese sticks don't allow for that. They just have those little smaller holes. So you can be a, a professional type person and get a special drill or something to get through the metal of your arcade stick. What I ended up doing because, you know, I'm a, I'm not about the looks, you know, I'm about the performance. I'm a bit more of a hacker type person and I don't have a lot of patience. I got a file and I just filed my hole bigger. It looks like hell. There's no denying that. But if you want to stick it in there, it's still possible to do. Also, again, it gave me appreciation for this hoary stick because, man, filing through that, that is some pure metal. It's going to give you a workout. I think a lot of people will probably not actually file this they'll get a you know drill or they'll get a special case or whatever it is but if you're determined enough you can just buy this it's called um a pittsburgh file and just file it file the hole big enough to stick your arcade stick through this is actually the stick so then of course these are just the parts i'll link to the website you're going to order these parts from the golden arcade stick website there's no denying that they are pricey perhaps even overpriced especially with shipping but, you know, that is the cost of getting this to work because I do think these parts are quality. That's why I'm recommending them. And I have no affiliation with the Golden Stick team or anything like that. 
like I said, I think their their standard build that you just order is crazy overpriced and not necessarily all that good. So get the you know get your bat top. So again, the actuator, the actuator size you need to get a specific size, which is 16 millimeter. That's the size to get. This has all they have all different sizes to choose from, which is what I liked. I ended up just ordering. In order to put this build together, I ordered basically all the parts and then went through them and chose like, okay, this is perfect, you know, match them up. So I'm saving you a lot of money so you don't have to go through all the parts. 60 millimeter actuator. Um, some people have been complaining about getting the, the golden ones and maybe to get plastic. I personally think the gold ones are better because they're heavier. You can just grease them up. I like the heavier actuator over the plastic ones, but if you really want the plastic, that's not matching my build, but you can get 60 millimeter plastic as well. So uh, the shaft of the stick, nine millimeter, that's the size to get. I got nine and 9.5 because I knew I wanted a thicker one. 9.5 is actually too thick. So nine, nine is the one you want. 9.5 is just too thick. It makes the corners too small. It's not good. Nine, that's the one you want. Grommet tension, the green, the second highest. So there's, I can't remember the, it's called light. So there's lightest, which is like a light green. And then there's light, which is green. And then I think they're blue and onward. You want light, the green one, but not lightest, the light green. <laughs> okay. So it's called light. Next, get the core, get the standard core. And the standard core comes with two springs, the heavy spring and the standard spring. Use the standard spring, in my opinion. This one you can kind of this one could necessarily be preference because it controls how much your stick turns in your hand. But I think that a little bit of a turn is good because sometimes you need to turn as you do hand movements. And it's more natural, I think, to have your stick turn a little bit with you. So standard core. Get the mounting plate because I assume you don't have a Korean mounting stick. So get the mounting plate with it. This is makes it so you can file down your hole and put it in a Japanese stick. You actually need this. So get the mounting plate. And then this is the this is the money maker right here. This is what really holds this build together and I think puts it above pretty much all the other Korean stick builds you see out there, which is the micro switch holder. This makes a big difference as far as your remember I was talking about wanting a light stick, but that's really stable. It's actually really impressive how much stability this adds to the arcade stick. This is kind of the the money maker, like I was saying, that separates it from everything else. So get this plate and that is pretty much it. So that's all the parts that you need to put this together. Um, priced out, it's going to be pretty expensive, probably like 80 bucks or something like that. That's just a guess. I can't remember because I ordered a bunch of parts, about like $150 and everything. But that is the build. So I'll end this by showing the stick in action. If you're interested in checking it out, I definitely recommend it. This is actually, I've been playing on this for about two and a half weeks. Lots of time playing on it, making sure it's actually good before I recommend it. Yes, this is exactly what I've been looking for. I've had close to this by doing my own mods, but the problem with my own mods is they're less stable. Um, they have some, they break down a little bit. Um, just all kinds, you know what I mean? They're kind of not as, well officially put together as this build so yes i'll go ahead and uh this is what i got the battle grega 1cc with and i'll show it in action and thanks so much So if you made it to the end of the video, that means you enjoyed the content. So please consider liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. And let me thank my patrons. 
Dingo, Handicap, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Borgie22, Corio, Disco Star Slayer, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Haosu, Kiwi, J Lab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, Game Boy Guru, K, Malays, Mark Toms, Martin Worrell, Maz, Meher Kalendrian, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Okla Kugels, Ram Q, Raul, Smacky Factor, Sagumo, Plasmo, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.